in this video, we're gonna take a look at a purple ink by Noodlers, Purple Heart. Now, as always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also, down in the description is a link to all of the purple inks here on the channel. I'm an ink guy, and let's get into the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Claire Fontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. Now we have no feather, spread, halo sheen. We do see some spots of shading going on, as in there's a nice peppering of dark spots that occur throughout the extra fine and throughout the medium as well. Not so much with the stub. They are all writing in the same tone, which is very nice that it's that consistent. The extra fine took four seconds to dry, and the medium took seven seconds to dry. Now the scrubby from far left to far right does show a little bit of color variation. I do think it, the peppering of dark spots looks nicer in the writing. The smear test, you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Pilot Custom 912 with a music nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. We have no bleeding, no major ghosting. We have no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shade. The paper just gives it too much opportunity to level out as it's drying. We still get a very consistent tone. The extra fine took 10 seconds to dry while the medium took 16 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both don't really show us any color variation. We don't get it in the writing. And there is a slim chance that you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down, and then it's put in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see this very nice red at the bottom. It's forming a line immediately, showing that it's gonna have some permanence. It's pushing its way up, and then we get a very light blue. The one on the right that's let dry for 10 minutes, the red line is a bit darker and more there, showing that it's gonna be more permanent, but there's no major difference between the two of them. We just expect a little resistance here. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. No bleeding, no ghosting. Now in the writing, we have no feather, spread, halo sheen. We still get very nice pepperings of shading throughout the stub, throughout the extra fine, and in the medium. We have a very consistent tone through all three pens. The extra fine took five seconds to dry and the medium took eight seconds. Great dry times. The scrubby does show a tiny bit of color variation. It's better in the writing. And the smear test you could definitely recover if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, you have nothing to fear using this in a note-taking situation. It holds together fantastically. Now, water is only lifting the blue aspects out, leaving the red that we saw in the chromatography. Pen flush does everything that water does, absolutely nothing more. It did only take water to get this out of my pen. Now the one-third bleach solution is removing the blue and bleaching the red down to a very interesting pink. The next writing sample is done on Nemosinine paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. We have no feather, spread, halo sheen, nice peppering of shading that goes on in the stub. In the extra fine, it's not as much. In the medium, it shows itself quite a bit better, looking at quick going dark to light to dark, brown going dark to light to dark, fox going light to dark, really looks good here. The extra fine is noticeably lighter than the stub, which is the first time we've seen that happen. Medium's the same tone as the stub. The extra fine took five seconds to dry while the medium took eight. The scrubby for both show a little bit of color variation and we do get some of that in the writing. The smear test, you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5 and the realm of normal was 2.1 to 2.9. 
Noodler's Purple Heart had a viscosity of 3.02, making this a dry ink. If you're interested in how the viscosity tests and all that's done, there's a link to that video down in the description. The next writing sample is done on a memoranda pad, just like the one I would have used when I was in the Marines. No bleeding, no ghosting. Really good performance on what you would expect to be cheap paper. This memoranda pads, they are the unsung hero to me and they're very inexpensive to get. We see no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shading in the medium, but we do get shading in the extra fine, which I was not expecting at all. It took two seconds to dry for the extra fine. The scrubby shows no color variation, but we are getting it up there. And the smear test, you could definitely recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, and the realm of normal was 13 to 21 seconds. Noodler's Purple Heart had an average dry time of 9 seconds, so this is a fast drying ink. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Now we have a lot of very heavy bleed into the paper, it leads to a lot of uh, show through. None of this touches the page underneath, so it doesn't corrupt that paper, but you can't use the back of the page if you needed to. The medium has a tiny, tiny bit of feathering. It's really very manageable there. This is tremendous performance in what's going on here because the extra fine has no feather. The extra fine spreads to about a fine. The medium didn't spread at all. It has no halo, no sheen, no shade. One second to dry. Great on crappy paper here. The scrubby shows a tiny bit of color variation looking at far left to far right, but it doesn't come through in the writing. And you can't smear it so you don't have to worry about that while you're writing. Instead of finding inks that look like Noodler's Purple Heart, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I decided to go with a black ink from Colorverse, their Sunspot. Now, if you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description is links to that playlist. So what do I think of Noodler's Purple Heart? This can give a lot of tone variation by pen, we just weren't seeing a ton of it in the writing sample. It looked so consistent there. And they're all good ones when you get them. I like using this ink and would like to thank all the veterans out there and Goulet Pens for making this ink possible. This particular review took quite a few efforts for me to do just thinking about some of my friends that have this very award and it's not an easy thing on them. So what nib and pen give the best writing experience with this ink? A medium flow stub really puts down a nice tone and some good color variation within it. But so did a dry fine. I hope you got something out of this video and in the next video, we're gonna take a look at Sailor's Fuji Musumi. I was happy to make this review. Let's honor the ink that honors the men.